Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, or oh, welcome if this is your first time here. If this is your first time here, why don't you watch a little bit, and if you like what you see, maybe hit subscribe and comment and like and turn on your notifications and all of that good stuff. Today I am making my first Mardi Gras wreath of the year, which, it's still December, but um, this is my first Mardi Gras wreath I'm making for 2022. I have 21 inch purple mesh because I could not find 10 inch mesh when I ordered. I don't like working with 21 inch mesh really. I mean, it's like if, if I'm doing poof, it's fine, but like anything else, I'm out because it's it's hard for me to cut. Um, just it's it's hard for me to cut. It, it's hard on my body. Uh, so I have a lot of. Let me see how long these are. These are yeah, these are like between. I was cutting kind of like 11, 11 and a half, 12, somewhere up in there. And I am going to, these are basically in the size I want them to be, like, just, like, two and a quarter, something like that. Um, I don't know what this method is called, where you make the rolls, and then you go from here to here, and then from here to here, and then from here to here. Uh, so I will hopefully have that in the video description. Okay, and I'm going to put extra rolls on top of this. My mesh that I'm putting on top of this is 10 inches wide, so that means that the rolls are going to stick out 5 inches, so we want to go 5 inches from the edge. And pinch here. So let me just come over here, since this is where I'm going to be starting. So we're going to pinch here. Put this in. And then pinch here. And I want to make sure that cut edge is to the back. So that looks crazy, but see where we go. This one was closer to the inner inside of the roll, so it's a little tighter. I'm just gonna open it up a little bit. So we're coming in right where we left off. I'm just turning them because it's easier for me to measure from 1 to 5 than it is for to measure from 24 to 19. Not sure why, but... I have black pipe cleaners on here just because I know I don't have purple. I don't really keep colored pipe cleaners. Like if it's a dark wreath, I'll try to go with, you know, brown or black. If it's a light wreath, I'll go with white. If it's a natural wreath, I'll go with the natural. I think I really only keep, let's see, black, white, natural, brown, and red. And I only have red because it is Valentine's Day time and Christmas time, so... I bought a big hundred pack of red. And I always have white because I can get white easily at Walmart. All the other bulk packs you either have to order online or go to Hobby Lobby. I don't buy pipe cleaners from Michael because Michael's because they're too expensive. And I don't really go to Joann's as often as I would like to, definitely. But I did get some pipe cleaners from Joann's. They had like a... I, I just happened to be there and they were on sale. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll just get a bunch of pipe cleaners.
Okay. I was I was thinking it was looking flat for a little while, but once I put the second row in here, it def definitely domed up some. Okay. I'm going to Take a little break, rest my back, cut some more mesh, and then we will continue. Okay, I've taken a roll of uh, purple, green, and gold mesh. This from Craft Outlet. It's kind of thin. I didn't realize it was this thin until I started cutting it, but I've cut it into 36 10 inch sections. But I'm only going to use 24. I'm going to put two in each pie around the outside, and then I'm going to leave this. As it is because there's already a lot in the middle and it's going to get covered up with my sign so i'm going to put this in work on the sign you know so with these the thing you want to remember is just not to squeeze the life out of them i mean they didn't do nothing to you you don't have to kill them and i did cut this with the wood burner Gonna cross them over each other. Pinch them shut like that. And then get them in there. So it's still gonna look primarily purple, but you'll be able to see a a little bit of the green gold, which we will continue to bring in once we add our sign and the ribbons and the bows and the embellishments and all of that. So, same thing as we did before with the, when we were making these rolls. You know, you want them two and a quarter, two and a half, something like that. And if you don't, like, if, if you if you cut your mesh, like, like some a lot of times before I go to sleep, um, before I, before I retire for the day, rather, I will cut my mesh for the next day. So when I wake up the next morning, I can get right to filming without worrying about like, oh, I got to cut this mesh and I got to do this. I got to do that. So when you are cutting curls like this, when you start off, they're really wide open because they're the furthest, furthest away from the center of the roll. So what I do, like, say this is the first one I cut, I put this one down and as I go, I open the ones on top of it. So when I get to the middle and the curls are really tight, that this, this set over here is all the really tight ones. Those lay over the top and overnight they stretch out a little bit because this is holding them open some. Because the, the, uh, the tighter they are, the harder they are to not roll into little bitty cigars, you know.
I mean, that is a nice little reef. Probably seven inches deep right now. And it's very, uh, it's very dense. Like, I don't have any purple. I don't have any, like, blue. I don't have any black pipe cleaners. All right, my base is done, my sign is attached, and I have a bunch of ribbons. I'm just gonna do a funky bow, and I'm just gonna kind of speed through it because we've done it a hundred times. But I'm gonna start with, hmm, let me get these in order. I wanna start with the green because that'll contrast nicely up against the purple. And then we will go into, I don't want these by each other. Because those are both stripes. And I'm going to mix up, you know, I usually go widest down to least wide, but I'm just going to, let's, let's just go crazy. I'm probably going to start off at seven and just work my way down a little bit. You've seen me make a funky bow a hundred times, so that's just what it is, what it is. I'm going to try to keep things organized, but y'all know how I am when I start making bows and stuff starts going flat. Exactly.
I'll deal with that when I edit the YouTube video. All right, this bell was massive. I'm not sure that I made a good choice here, but you know what? It's done. It, um, it, it's going to need to be continuously pooped. Like, I think that's just, that's what you're getting yourself into when you add nine ribbons to a bow. So this is where we're at. Obviously, I'm missing here. I'm missing here. But last year, we did not have a Mardi Gras. So we had a lot of Mardi Gras stuff left over at Walmart. They have these again this year. They were $3.88. I did not pay that much for them. Because y'all know I don't like paying for things. But these are some truly, truly huge picks. So let's put three of them in one reef. As with everything Mardi Gras, they are grotesquely glittery. Okay, so I am thinking one coming this way, one coming this way, and one coming down here. We're going to try to fluff these up a little bit before I... I might kind of dismantle these some. Everything's individually wired. I just want to be able to... I want this to come down. This is going to be this way. It's going to be this way. stems this long. I'm just going to kind of bend this to go with the curve of the wreath. and hot. I love that. Alright, I'm just going to get in here and kind of squeeze the, um, squeeze the glue around the mesh. And once that sets, I'm going to bend, because this is sticking out too far, that's why I'm going to bend that part of the pick down. I think these are all the same. Yeah, no. Oh no, they are. Okay. So this one's gonna come this way. I'm gonna start off by curving it a little.
y'all. Right. These are kind of big, so I probably will go in and anchor them in with a pipe cleaner or a piece of wire or something. So I want it to come down a little bit more this way. And then this last one is going to go like here. Turn down to there. I mean, I'm going to remove this wreath when I'm done, and y'all are just going to be like, oh my god, the glitter. feel about these stars. They look kind of, uh, peep. go ahead and trim this tail and this tail because that sign was too expensive for me to not have it completely shown. Okay, and that's a Mardi Gras wreath. I think I need to, this is missing a lot of glitter on it just because, you know, um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. This needs to, well, I guess it doesn't need to come in. It's just, I'm worried about this sticking out when I put it in a box, but I'll be able to put it in the box and then kind of curl this stuff around. I need to work on these a little bit. And I think this one is supposed to be curled like that, so I'm just going to try to do that. And try to open these up. So there we go. these were wired, but they're not. So 
just kind of spread those out. Alright, so that is the first Mardi Gras wreath of the season. Hopefully I'm able to restrain myself a little bit more on the next ones, but... I'm going to have to do a major cleanup here. So let me flip it and shake it. Hopefully they got all the tails out. I fluffed the bow up a little more. I still need to come through here and rearrange things, but I'm not going to make y'all sit through that. I'm going to throw up some pictures. And if you like this and would like to buy it, it is available at Etsy along with all my other wreaths. You can follow me on Instagram and TikTok. You can join us on Patreon for $5 a month or $20 a month if you want to join the sign club where you get a free sign every month. Um, Venmo is listed if you want to buy me a coffee or a daiquiri because it's Mardi Gras season, even though I don't drink. And Amazon if you want to buy me a present because my birthday's coming up. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.